mint and mint once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Today, I'm back with vegetable of the day, the one and only mint. So maybe you think we're talking about peppermint. Maybe you think we're talking about spearmint. Or maybe you know nothing at all. Well, whatever the case may be, <laughs> please listen and watch on why, because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of mint. All right, 23% Nation, I know that a lot of you are probably wondering, what are mint leaves? So here we go, guys, a little bit of background information. So to address the question, mint leaves can refer to any plant in the mintha genus, but the term is most often used to refer to peppermint and spearmint, the two most common types of mint plant. Now, for those of us who are wondering, what are some of the visible differences between spearmint and peppermint? Well, guys, just take a look at the picture. As you can see, they have different color flowers, right? And the, the shapes of the leaves are also different. So in a little while, we're going to learn a little more, but at least superficially, we can now tell the difference between spearmint and peppermint. Notice peppermint has purple flowers, whereas spearmint has white flowers. Interesting, huh? Okay, more background information. So let's talk about a few more differences between peppermint and spearmint. Spearmint is a plant with a sweet flavor that works well in many recipes, while peppermint has a higher concentration of menthol, which accounts for many of the medicinal uses of mint leaves. So ladies and gentlemen, here's the basic difference. Spearmint is primarily used to add flavor, whereas peppermint is primarily used for its medicinal properties. So there we have it, guys. We now know the superficial and the more deeper differences between peppermint and spearmint. All right, now it's time for a few fun facts. Some people may be wondering, where should I buy mint leaves, right? <laughs> well, here we go. You can typically find mint leaves in the produce section of your local grocery store, right alongside other herbs like thyme, basil, and rosemary. You can also offer dried mint leaves, which are usually found in the spice section. So, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at the picture. I'm not only showing you what fresh mint leaves look like, but then we also have the dried version as well as the crushed dried version, right? So there we have it, guys. We now know where to purchase our mint leaves from. Okay, more fun facts. The word mint stems from the Latin word mintha. In Greek, the word menthi is rooted in Greek mythology. According to Greek legend, Menthe was a nymph whom Hades fell in love with. When his wife, Persephone, found out, she turned Menthe into a plant to be constantly crushed and stepped on. Oh, no. When Hades was unable to reverse the spell, he instead gave her a delicious mint-like aroma so that he could still smell her. How nice. <laughs> Well, guys, this is a very interesting story, and it proves that even the ancient Greeks had drama. <laughs> That's right, guys. So there we have it. More fun facts about the one and only mint. All right, now it's time for the not-so-fun facts. Now, a lot of people may be wondering, so Coach D, is mint safe? Oh, well, let's find out. Although side effects of mint leaves are uncommon when consumed in moderation, adverse symptoms have been reported. In particular, peppermint may cause side effects like headaches, mouth sores, and heartburn. Both variations of the mint plant, peppermint and spearmint, can cause food allergy symptoms as well. Oh no, 
If you experience any negative side effects after eating mint leaves, consider decreasing or stopping consumption and consulting with your doctor. So for those of us who are wondering what in the world would a mint allergy actually look like? Well, you may experiencing you may experience a little bit of itching. Maybe your lips swell, maybe you have problems breathing, or maybe your tongue begins to swell and or itch. Well, as I just stated, if you experience any of these adverse effects, you either want to decrease, stop, and or consult with your doctor. So there we have it guys, the not so fun facts about the one and only mint. Okay, more not so fun facts. Additionally, while mint is often considered a go-to for di digestive distress, it is not recommended for those who suffer from gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. This is because mint is said to relax the muscles of the lower esophageal sphincter, which can make acid reflux and GERD symptoms even worse. Wow. Take a look at the picture, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, on the left, we have a closed sphincter. On the right, notice that the sphincter does not close completely. As a matter of fact, it's still open, which now allows the, the contents of the stomach to actually empty back into the esophagus. That's right. So that's why you see the word reflux. So there we have it, guys. We now know more not so fun facts about the one and only mint. All right, let's now time to talk about the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule is all about food labels. That's right. It helps us to read and understand food labels. Ultimately, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets you know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, really what we're talking about is percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, let's take a look at our sample food label. As you can see, it is divided into three main parts, purple, yellow, and blue. So at this time, let's take it part by part by part. <laughs> First is the percent daily value column in purple. Now, as you can see, percent DV is basically represented as a percentage, ranging from as low as 0% to as high as 100%. Now, let's take a look at the yellow portion. Now, the yellow portion basically highlights a few nutrients, which unfortunately can cause sickness, illness, and disease. So when it comes to saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium, you want those percent DVs to be as close to 0% as possible. Now, let's talk about the blue nutrients. We're talking about dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron. Now, these nutrients do just the opposite of the yellow nutrients. Rather than promote sickness, illness, and disease, they promote health and wellness within the body temple. So the next time you eat or drink something, you probably want to make sure that those percent DVs are as close to 100% as possible. Now, let's dive just a little deeper into the 520 rule, which by the way, in my opinion, is oversimplified. Five simply refers to 5%, meaning low. 20 simply refers to 20%, meaning high. Now, let's dive just a little deeper. If a food or beverage item offers 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food or beverage item has 10% to 19% DV, then that food or beverage item is considered a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food or beverage item offers 20% DV or more, then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. Okay, now that we've gone over the 520 rule, let's now dive just a little deeper into the nutrition facts. So for today's lecture, we're gonna simply say that a single serving of mint 
is equal to two tablespoons of fresh spearmint at that. So within this single serving, we're going to get 4.9 calories, 0 0.9 grams of carbs. Look at this, guys, 0 0.4 grams of protein. Now, you probably didn't think that mint had protein. Well, guys, here we go. And let's quickly remember that protein, when consumed from the diet, is pretty much used for to strengthen our immune system, is used to synthesize muscle tissue, right? And even hair. That's right, guys. Also, single serving of mint is going to give us 0 0.1 grams of fat. And look at this, 0 0.8 grams of dietary fiber. Now, usually I always highlight protein and fiber. Why? Because plant foods do a really good job at offering both. That's right. And let's quickly remember that fiber is nature's plumber. In other words, it keeps your tubes clean, right? Particularly your arteries and your colon. <laughs> Moving on. Then we have vitamin A coming in at 9% DV. Not a good source. Iron coming in at 7% DV. Not a good source. Then there's manganese coming in at 6% DV. Not a good source. Folate coming in at 3% DV, not a good source. Calcium, 2% DV, not a good source. Magnesium and vitamin C each coming in at only 2% DV, not a good source. But guys, remember something. This is only based on a single serving, which is only two tablespoons. So guess what? If you want more vitamin C, magnesium, and calcium, just simply double or maybe even triple your servings. So there we have it, guys, the nutrition facts about the one and only mint. All right, now it's time to talk about the health benefits. But before we do, I want to offer you something rather special. Ladies and gentlemen, 23% Nation, I want to talk with you about the principle of cause and effect, which basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. That being said, I want to let you know that if you have a disease, well, chances are you cause it. Versus if you're healthy, well, guess what? Chances are you cause that too. So here's what I need you to understand is that health and disease are basically the effects. What's more important is that we focus on the causes, right? So how do we become healthy? How do we become diseased? Well, guys, let's focus on the health, right? So in talking about the principle of cause and effect, we're now going to apply it to the health benefits of mint. So what I need you to understand is that the health benefit is the effect. What's important is that we focus on the cause which are basically the phytonutrients found in the plant right now some people may even go a little further and say rather than use the word phytonutrient let's use the word medicine right because a lot of people believe that there is medicine in plants that's right so Health benefit number one, improves digestive health. Amazing. So now the question is, what's the cause, right? Well, it's called menthol. That's the phytonutrient that's found in mint. Health benefit number two, may relieve cold symptoms. What's the cause? What's the phytonutrient? What's the medicine? Well, say hello to menthol once again. Benefit number three, helps oral hygiene. Nice. Guys, did you know that mint has antimicrobial properties? Well, if you didn't know, now you know. Health benefit number four, it boosts brain function. Amazing. Now the cause is the peppermint scent itself. Benefit number five, it soothes breastfeeding pain. Wow, who knew? Well guys, the cause is the peppermint gel, ladies in particular. Benefit number six, reduces polycystic ovary syndrome symptoms. Now, the question is, what's the cause, right? Well, believe it or not, guys, mint has 
anti-androgen effects. In other words, mint helps to reduce testosterone levels. That's right. Benefit number seven, decreases indigestion. What's the cause? Well, peppermint oil. So there we have it, guys. Seven amazing health benefits from the one and only mint. All right, now it's time to talk about food, but in particular, plant foods. So let's go to our website for everything vegan. Say hello to ForksOverKnives.com. By the way, there is a movie entitled Forks Over Knives, which I highly recommend you watch. So as usual, I went to the website, did just a little bit of research, and I came across two amazing mint vegan recipes that I want to share with you right now. So the first one is green pea hummus with fresh mint. Take a look at the picture. Looks delicious, yes. The second recipe is chocolate pistachio mint and strawberry rose bliss balls. Take a look at that picture. Looks delicious, yes. So if your mouth is watering and you are very interested in making and tasting these dishes, here's what I suggest. Click on the description box. Click on the link. Yes, I am providing you with a direct link to both recipes. Click on the link. Make the dish, taste the dish, come back to the video and share your thoughts. So there we have it, guys. Not one, but two amazingly delicious looking <laughs> vegan mint recipes from ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, thanks for the fun fa facts, the not so fun facts, and the nutrition facts. But what I really want to know is, when should I eat more mint? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that is your question, then the perfect day, and I do mean the perfect day to eat more mint, is Nature Day. That's right, guys. Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, some of us may be totally unaware of the challenge. So, for those of you who are unaware, here we go. The 23% Challenge is a monthly seven-day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships. Oh, and it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, here are two things that we need to know about the challenge. Number one, it's every month. And number two, it's only seven days. As a matter of fact, it's the first seven days of every single month. The first through the seventh. So, being that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every month. That's right. So whether it's October 1st, November 1st, or December 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right, 23% Nation. A lot of you are probably wondering, all right, Coach D, so what is Nature Day all about? Well, guys, Nature Day is all about eating more plants. That's it. And of course, drinking more water. Now, for some people, that may be easy. For others, it may be difficult. Well, let's talk about it. So you may want to try baby steps if it's difficult for you. So why not eat only plants and drink only water before 12 p.m.? That way, after 12 p.m., you can eat and drink whatever you want. If before 12 p.m. doesn't work for your schedule, then why not after 12 p.m.? That way, before 12 p.m., you can eat and drink whatever you want, <laughs> okay? Now, for some of us, that 12-hour period may not seem very challenging at all. So, you may want to up the ante. In that case, I'll give you a few more options. Number one, try to become a 3% vegan. That's any person, man, woman, or child, who picks one day out of an entire month to eat only plant foods and drink only water. Next is a 10% vegan. That's any person, man, woman, or child, who eats plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Next up is a 17% vegan. That's going five days of eating only plant foods and drinking only water. And lastly is the ultimate 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be. That's right, guys. So here's what it means. It means that for the first seven days of every single month, I only eat from the five food groups of plant foods, which happen to be fruits, vegetables, 
nuts and seeds, whole grains, and let's not forget about legumes, meaning beans and peas. So there we have it, guys. We now know what Nature Day is all about. Okay, now 23% Nation, a lot of you still have questions. I get it. And so now you probably are wondering, well, who should participate in Nature Day, right? Well, let me break it down like this. So maybe you have some physical ailments, such as the big four, right? Heart disease, obesity, cancer, diabetes. Maybe you have skin issues like eczema, psoriasis, pimples, whiteheads, and blackheads. Maybe you have digestive issues like constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, or maybe leaky gut syndrome. Or maybe you have mental issues. Maybe you're bipolar. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're sad all the time, or maybe you're angry all the time. Or maybe it's just very difficult for you to concentrate. Or maybe it's difficult for you to go to sleep, right? And so maybe you are looking for a natural, holistic approach to your healing. Well, guys, it's easy. Eat more plants. Maybe you're the type of person who wants to change their physical appearance. Maybe you want to lose a few inches from your hips and your waist. Or maybe you want to build some quality lean muscle mass, right? Well, we do have a vegan lean and a vegan bulk program. Or maybe you're just looking to transition from the standard American diet to a more whole food plant-based diet. It's easy. Eat more plants. So there we have it, guys. We now know exactly who Nature Day is for. All right. It's time for Coach D's tips. Why? Because I want you to have a successful Nature Day. Tip number one, go to your local grocery store. Now, when you get there, you're going to go to one of three places. Number one is the produce section. Number two is the freezer aisle. Number three is the canned good aisle. Now, a lot of people may say, well, Coach D, what's best, fresh, frozen, or canned? Well, guys, if I have to answer that question, I'll do it this way. Number one is going to be fresh. Number two is going to be frozen. And number three is going to be canned. Why canned third? Well, here we go. Whenever you place any food in any can, <laughs> some processing is involved now through that through that process unfortunately a lot of nutrients are destroyed and a lot of toxins are added so at the end of the day you may be taking in more toxins than you are nutrients so that is why fresh is first frozen is second a very close second and can is way in the back in third place Tip number two, go visit the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So when you're done with the canned good aisle, the freezer aisle, and the produce section, right, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, this is where you're going to find someone standing behind a large counter, and they're going to have a lot of prepared food in front of you that's sold by the pound. Now, when you walk over there, ask them if they have any vegan or plant-based options if they do and you're not familiar with it just ask for a quick sample don't worry it should be for free okay and if you like it go ahead and purchase it by the pound or maybe you're throwing a party or maybe you're having family dinner purchase two maybe even three pounds of it tip number three go visit your local farmers market now guys farmers markets are amazing why because they cater to the non-gmo organic market that's right so if you're the type of person who has to have organic this and organic that and you don't like any type of pesticides in your foods, right, then you probably want to visit your local farmer's market. Tip number four, it's time to support the vegan restaurant community. That's right, guys. Now, I recommend this for a few reasons. Number one, vegan restaurants do a really good job at hiring vegan chefs who basically know exactly how to cook and prepare lots of plant-based dishes. Also, they do a really good job at combining plant foods together. So they know exactly which plant foods to combine to yield the most nutritious, delicious dishes. And tip number five is to go ahead and get yourself a subscription to a vegan meal prep company. Now, here's how they operate. You give them a call, you get the subscription, 
they make the food, they deliver the food, you eat the food. It's just that simple. Now, I highly recommend this for those of us who simply complain that we don't have time to cook plant foods. We don't know how to cook plant foods, or maybe we just don't want to cook plant foods, right? Once again, let someone else do the cooking for you. So there we have it, guys. Five amazing tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day. Coming from yours truly and the rest of the 23% nation, we have inquiry minds. So we want to know, what's a difference between peppermint and spearmint? Now, I believe I covered several differences be during this lecture. So if you got them good, please write your answer in the comment box below. If you didn't, well, just simply hit rewind. Guys, I want to thank you for listening. I definitely want to thank you for watching. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please subscribe, share, comment, and like the video, especially if you love mint. And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out. Always remember to take care, God bless, and never ever forget that Coach D loves you.